Oh my god. I shouldn't have come out to play with a big boy's wean because you're about to get a proper Scottish welcome. What? The Uncharted film has been in production for over 10 years now, and now that we finally have this film out, I thought it would be interesting to look into the production of this film and figure out why it took so long for it to finally hit the big screen. Many of us are already aware what production hell is, and Uncharted is a film that definitely fits that description. For a movie that already has a heavy storyline and the foundation right in front of them, why would it take Sony over 10 years to make a product that was less than what the fans base plan for this movie to be. So let's look into what exactly happened here. We know now that Tom Holland plays Nathan Drake in the final product of this film. Back in 2008, Mark Wahlberg was set to play a younger Nathan Drake but seemingly aged out of the role, so it was handed to someone younger and popular. And we know that Sony wasn't going to pass up an opportunity to cast their moneymaker in their other moneymaker, right? In October of 2008, the Uncharted movie had been announced with former Marvel movie producer Avi Arad. He told Kotaku at the time that Nathan Drake was an interesting character, and compared him to that of another infamous film character, Indiana Jones. The best thing about Drake is he's not an archaeologist, Arad said. He's not a benevolent guy, but he's certainly not a great guy. Indiana Jones was always a good guy, and he relentlessly did the right thing. Drake is a guy who's being hauled over to virtue throughout the game. Initially, Sony went to Thomas Dean Donnelly and Joshua Oppenheimer, who co-wrote the 2005 Matthew McConaughey action-adventure movie Sahara. The movie was similar to Uncharted in that it follows a rogue archaeologist caught up in military conflict. Because Sahara was a huge box office bomb, Donnelly and Oppenheimer would eventually leave the Uncharted project. It's apparent that Sony was looking for writers and directors who had noteworthy projects beforehand. Most importantly, they wanted writers and directors who had worked on projects that brought in money for a company. The next biggest hurdle was trying to find someone to play Nathan Drake. Nathan Fillion learned of Sony's plans to make the film and wanted to play the role. In 2010, Fillion launched a campaign to try to rally support to get himself cast as Nathan Drake. Although Fillion does look like Nathan Drake, it was never called clear by Sony whether he was seriously considered for the role. After failing to secure a writer or director for the film, Sony hired I Heart Huckabees and Three Kings director David O. Russell. He was hired in October 2010 and he was to direct and write the film. At the time, the film was already reported to have stalled negotiations. Russell already had some... In 2010, he had already released a film starring Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale called The Fighter. The film earned multiple Oscar nominations and wins for Christian Bale and Melissa Leo. It made sense that Sony would want to go with someone like this and clearly knew what they were doing as far as directing and writing. Russell's adaptation would be known as Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, with Mark Wahlberg set to play Drake in this version. In 2010, Russell responded to the campaign for Fillion to play Drake. A very bold fan of Fillion, Greg Blessing 27, would ask Russell point blank to cast Fillion. It had been decided since Russell joined the film that his relationship with Wahlberg, as well as Sony's interest in having a bigger name, would mean that Wahlberg would end up playing the role of Nathan Drake instead of Nathan Fillion. We all know that things have clearly changed, but at the time, that was who was expected to play Nathan Drake. Surprisingly, Russell praised the fan for standing up for and supporting Villion in his attempt to land the role. In 2011, Mark Wahlberg, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Scarlett Johansson, and Amy Adams were rumored to be part of the film for unspecified roles. It was never stated whether they were actually considered by Sony. In May 2011, Russell became the first of six directors to quit the Uncharted movie. The other directors would also leave for various other reasons. However, at the time, Russell reported his reasoning for exit was because he had creative differences with the studio. There aren't many definitive reasons for Russell's departure, but fans had theories as to why. They believe that Russell's vision for the Uncharted movie was way different than what Sony wanted for the film, specifically the character of Nathan Drake. Earlier that year, Russell told MTV that he wanted an Uncharted movie to be about a crime family that meets out justice in the world of art and antiquities. They're like the Sopranos in some ways, but they have great taste. And 
and they have a sense of justice. This was clearly not what the Uncharted franchise was about, so it was clear that Russell's vision seemed more set in a realistic world and relied less on the adventure part of it. His vision was too far from what the Uncharted movie was supposed to be, so it makes sense why he would have left. But now we're down a director and already four years into the project, and there have yet to be any actors named for the film, even a loose synopsis. In July 2011, Sony hired their next choice of director, Neil Berger. Berger had directed Limitless, and Sony was interested in him being the next director and writer. At this time, it was speculated that Wahlberg would be dropping out, as his involvement was said to have been tied to working with Russell, who we know he has already made a few films with. In August 2012, Berger quit the production. He wasn't attached to the project for too long, leaving only 13 months after being hired. He left mainly to go work on Divergent, which came out in 2014. This was probably because things weren't going as smoothly for the film's production too. At this point, Sony had no other choice but to move on to their next director hiring another writing team, bringing on Mariana and Cormac Wibberley, who previously wrote the Nicolas Cage-fronted National Treasure series. The Wibberley duo eventually would leave Uncharted as well. So far, we have gone through four separate instances of directors and writers, two of them being a duo writing and directing team, and two single directors, and Sony has yet to secure final writers and directors for this film. Now we are five years into the film's production, and the script has yet to be written, with barely any actors to secure the roles or even a plot for the film. All while the Uncharted games were continuing strongly on their own. At this point, people were probably losing interest in the project, wondering if this would even happen at all. In a surprising turn of events, comedy writers Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg revealed in June 2013 that Sony and Naughty Dog pursued them on multiple occasions. In an interview with IGN about the latest film at the time, This Is The End, Rogen said, They're constantly asking me and Evan to make the Uncharted movie. Every single time they were approached, they declined because Goldberg and Rogen couldn't come up with a script that was new and fresh. It's just going to be Indiana Jones, Goldberg said. If we could figure out a way to make it not Indiana Jones, it'd be awesome. Seth Gordon was the Uncharted movie's third director. He was hired in February 2014. Having a history with video games, directing the 2007 Donkey Kong documentary, King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, which chronicled the rivalry between Billy Mitchell and Steve Weeb, Sony was hoping that they had secured a final director in Gordon. Around the same time, it was confirmed that Bad Boys writer David Guggenheim was brought on to write a new script. So back to casting for a second. It's no surprise to find out that Sony went to Chris Pratt, whose iconography is just what they needed for the Uncharted movie. In 2014, it was revealed that Chris Pratt declined when approached by Sony to play Nathan Drake. The Hollywood Reporter reported the news with no details on why Pratt turned it down. Chris Pratt also never commented on the situation himself. He probably declined because he had a lot of other roles going on at the time, working with Marvel and voice acting. But because of the already known shaky background of this production, he may have just wanted to play it safe and stick with a company he knows. Maybe he just didn't want to play the role at all. These are just my theories, but who knows, there may be an entirely different reason he didn't want to play the role. Around the same time, it was reported that Sony hired a journalist transitioning his way to film, Mark Bowl, whose screenplay won an Oscar for The Hurt Locker. At this point, it seems Sony's strategy is to go with people who have critically acclaimed films or have won awards for their work, which makes sense because they want the best out of the film. So Mark Bowl was now next to write the newest draft of the Uncharted movie. The Sony hacking scandal. And it is not pretty. This morning, Hollywood abuzz as Tinseltown's dirty laundry is laid out in plain view. What a mess for Sony, right? It's horrible. Everyone and their mother knows of the Sony email hack in April 2015. However, some may not know that it also revealed a number of things about the Uncharted movie. One executive said that the Uncharted movie won't be silly and soft like the National Treasure film. Another executive, Adam North, said the Uncharted movie will be a really fun summer adventure film, like Lara Croft movies, with a little bit of Dan Brown thrown in. It didn't just stop at executive opinion. Oh no, the hack also leaked the 124-page script that Guggenheim wrote, revealing key details about what he had planned for the film before he eventually left. The leaked emails also revealed things like potential shooting locations, Australia and Mexico, for example. So it was clear back then 
in 2015 that Sony intended for the film to be much more like the games. However, as the production kept getting delayed and writers and directors kept leaving, the movie was taking longer and longer to come out and I can't imagine how much money Sony has been throwing at this for already seven years at this point. In June 2015, Gordon became the third Uncharted movie director to quit the project. Sony's boss Tom Rothman stated that he wanted to change the creative direction of the film and cut some of the budget in the process. Gordon chose not to stay on board during these changes. A year later, Sony hired a fourth director for the Uncharted movie, Sean Levy. At the time, Levy was known for directing the Night at the Museum films, while also produced Stranger Things, which premiered in 2016 on Netflix. It was also reconfirmed at the time that the A-Team writer Joe Carnahan had written the latest draft of the Uncharted movie script. Things seemed to be on the right track, securing yet another writer and director. However, things wouldn't stay this way because drama behind the scenes was about to emerge. In February 2017, Joe Carnahan spoke to the fact that the script for the film was described as being R-rated and that Naughty Dog was on board with this. However, this didn't seem to be the entire truth, since Naughty Dog boss Neil Druckmann quickly fired back, saying no one at the studio has seen the movie's script and that he wished Carnahan would stop suggesting he has the support of the developer. In May 2017, Tom Holland secured the role as Nathan Drake. Before this, people were definitely hesitant that the film would ever get off the ground. However, Tom Holland being in the film made it look more promising. At the time, it was also confirmed that writer Raf Judkins, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., had come aboard to write the latest draft. Sony wasn't about to pass up Tom Holland playing this role, since he already worked with Sony in the past. In July of 2018, an independent short film of Uncharted would go viral. Canadian filmmaker Alan Unger released a 14-minute Uncharted fan film on his YouTube channel, and it exploded in popularity. Ironically, Nathan Fillion stars as Nathan Drake in the short film. The supporting cast is also impressive, including Avatar actor Stefan Lang as Sully and Marseille Monroe from How I Met Your Mother as Elena. The short film was praised for cinematography that excellently emulated how the Uncharted video games look, with over-the-shoulder shooting scenes and slow motion punching and transitions. This was what everybody was looking for, and it kind of seems like a shame that they didn't go with Fillion in the first place. It doesn't matter if you have a big name. If you have the talent, then you can make something that surpasses what a billion dollar company can do. It wasn't long before the Uncharted movie lost its fourth director in December 2018. Levy left Uncharted to direct another video game movie, Free Guy, which stars Ryan Reynolds as a man who one day discovers he actually is an NPC in a video game. So we know that the final product for the Uncharted movie could have been a whole lot worse than what we got. In April 2019, the Uncharted movie was at its fifth director, Dan Trachtenberg. All the directors that Sony has gotten so far have worked all over the map, so it seems that they don't know what kind of director they want for this film, which is why they keep coming into problems with the directors they hire. It seems at this point that they just want a director at all instead of looking for a director that can do the job. They want to have it both ways where they want a director that also has credibility and notoriety as well as knowing the source material and can write a good movie, but sometimes you can't have everything that you want. And because of this, Sony couldn't find a director that could actually do the job right. Things would have gone much more smoothly had they hired a director with a similar vision to the games, but they didn't think that far ahead when looking through their list of directors with notoriety. Trachtenberg admitted to being a huge fan of the Uncharted series and game director Neil Druckmann said he was enthusiastic to see what Trachtenberg would do with Nathan Drake. Trachtenberg had also experienced working on game adaptations, having made the popular Portal fan film Portal No Escape and directed the Resident Evil-inspired Black Mirror episode Playtest. It seemed like Sony had finally secured a director that would give them the Uncharted movie that they had been working toward for a decade now. However, things would not go so smoothly. In April 2019, more rumors of the Uncharted film started spreading around. A few unsubstantiated reports went around suggesting Chris Pine, Woody Harrelson, Chris Hemsworth, and Matthew McConaughey were all being considered on some level for the role of Victor Sully Sullivan. There was also earlier speculation that Breaking Bad star Brian Cranston might also be in the running for the role. Because it was just standard at this point, you had to know that Sony would end up hiring new writers Jonathan Rosenberg and Mark Walker in June 2019. Unlike Sony's usual strategy, this pair of writers have no major writing credits to their name. 
In the summer of 2019, Sony finally released a date to the decade-long project. It was set for December 18th, 2020. Sony may have been getting too ahead of themselves. 2020 came around and there was still no word about the movie's director. How could a film release in the same year without a director? Sony's optimism got the best of them. They weren't able to follow through with their initial release date, so the film was yet again delayed. It was announced in May of 2019 that Sony's video game division, PlayStation, would start a new company called PlayStation Productions. Basically, PlayStation wants to cash in on movie adaptations and has created this production company as a way to make TV and movie adaptations of their games. Uncharted was announced as its first movie. In August 2019, Dan Trachtenberg, who was the fifth director hired at this point, also also quit the movie. Trachtenberg never stated why he decided to leave the film. Sony was moving quickly to find a replacement, and they found one one month later. Sony hired their sixth director for Uncharted, Travis Knight. Knight was also known for directing Transformers movie Bumblebee, starring Haley Steinfeld and John Cena, as well as Kubo and the Two Strings. In November 2019, just before Thanksgiving, Mark Wahlberg was closing in on a deal to star in the Uncharted movie as Sully. Unsurprisingly, in December 2019, it was reported that Travis Knight became the sixth director to quit the project. This time, there was actually a reason for his departure. Knight left due to scheduling conflicts related to Tom Holland's work on the next Spider-Man movie. As vague as that is, I'm not sure exactly what the details of that are. In January 2020, it was reported that Sony was looking at Venom and Zombieland director Ruben Fleischer to direct. In March 2020, it was confirmed that actor Antonio Banderas, who had recently received an Oscar nomination for Dolor y Gloria, was cast in a major role in the Uncharted movie. It was also reported at the time that Grey's Anatomy's Sophia Ali had been cast as the female lead, while Chilling Adventures of Sabrina actress Tati Gabrielle had also come aboard in a major role. Art Markham and Matt Holloway were also noted as contributing to the script. Because of the pandemic, it was obvious that there were going to be even more set Packs to this never-ending project. In March 2020, Sony was just a few weeks away from rolling cameras when they announced that the film would be delayed. The date was pushed back from March 5th, 2021 to October 8th, 2021. This created a seven-month delay. Chung Hoon Chung was hired as the cinematographer, while Chris Levinson and Richard Pearson served as editors. In February 2020, Fleischer was confirmed as director, taking inspiration from the fourth game in the series, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. It's more of like an origin story. Um, so kind of meeting them uh, and Nathan becoming Nathan and uh, Sully and them kind of meeting and kind of trying to not only get over on each other but then also starting to partner up and develop that relationship. When filming actually began, some of the film was shot at Babelsberg Studio near Berlin, Germany. It is unclear when filming actually picked up again, but it was believed filming had resumed on July 15th, 2020. However, production had not yet resumed. Production officially resumed five days later on July 20th. 2020. On August 5th, 2020, Banderas temporarily left production after he tested positive for COVID-19. On August 26, 2020, Banderas recovered from coronavirus, returning to production soon after. On September 16, 2020, filming moved to Berlin, with set photos being released online. In beginning of October 2020, the production shot scenes in Alicante and Valencia, Spain, including the coastal town of Zabia. Digital shots were used to recreate the Philippines due to filming restrictions from the pandemic. Several action scenes drew inspiration from Jackie Chan. According to Holland, the bar fight was inspired by Chan's use of his surroundings to fight people in unique ways. On October 23rd, 2020, Holland finished shooting his scenes before production concluded on October 29th in Barcelona. Sony went all out for the marketing. According to iSpot, Sony spent around 20 million in television spots. The film was particularly advertised on NBC, CBS, ESPN, ABC, and Fox across programs including NFL football, Sports Center, the 2022 Winter Olympics, and the NBA. Online accounts for the film accumulated 407,000 followers, 40.9 million views from 42 Facebook videos, and 104.6 million views from 24 YouTube videos. Holland's 68.4 million followers on social media also helped in promoting the film. In October 2021, the first big trailer for the Uncharted movie dropped, followed by the second trailer two months later on December 20. 
23, 2021. The film premiered on February 18, 2022. Two mixed receptions from audiences. There seemed to be two camps of critics. One camp that just thought it was an all-standard safe adventure movie, and then you had the fans of the game who hated the movie because it wasn't a good adaptation to the games. There were some willing to acknowledge it was just a run-of-the-mill adventure movie. The type of response that you'll get will be very different. For some people who haven't played the games, they might like the film because it's just a fun adventure film and they don't really care that it's an adaptation, while some who are fans of the games might not even care about the adaptation and some who are offended by it. And then you just have some who think the movie is just simple and not really that innovative. Understandably, many were disappointed by how the film inevitably turned out, knowing that this film had been in production for over 10 years. The product was less than the ideal for the long wait, and it makes sense why some people would be very critical of it. Knowing the details of the production, it makes sense that the film ended up being the way it did. It suffered from many things that deprived the film the time, dedication, and effort it deserved. And because of that, we see that this product wasn't one that was what fans expected from an Uncharted film. After 10 years of trying to get this film off the ground, Sony allowed less and less time for script rewrites, and it shows. The characters are basic, and they aren't like the characters in the game. A standalone adventure film, sure, people will be more willing to accept it, but an adaptation of a beloved game series it makes sense why a lot of people are pissed about the way it turned out for the long wait. The Uncharted film went through a lot and many thought the film wouldn't even happen. However, we finally have received the movie after 14 years of anticipation. Multiple directors, delays, rumors, and everything in between. That was the production hell of Uncharted. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something out of the film. Hell, maybe you already knew all of these things and I'm just reminding you. But I hope no matter how you feel about the movie, maybe we can try to appreciate it for its own thing, knowing the hell that the film went through just to finally be made.